everybody and welcome to our channel. Today I'm making a video about uh, agency refusals and what the options are when you have a refusal, particularly going to federal court and filing a judicial review. So when you receive a refusal of your agency application, it could be quite a stressful moment uh, because you invest a lot of time and energy either you did it yourself or you hired a lawyer you inclu included hopefully a lot of strong supporting documentation and you prepared your story and you receive this refusal letter often what happens is the refusal letter is a boilerplate standard refusal letter uh, which means that it's standard it says that it's been refused it has the same content uh, as a lot of other refusals it doesn't actually go into the details of your story the documents that you provided and your file in your case. In some cases, the officer uh, will give you uh, upfront upon a refusal the actual reasons. So for example, it will be a few pages, either one page, two page, or sometimes it's very, very long and it explains I looked at this evidence, I looked at that, and I don't consider that you would suffer hardship or that you have enough establishment. When you receive the standard boilerplate refusal letter, um, it's important to send a letter to the office that rendered that decision and ask for the actual reasons for refusal. The letter that you receive, it's, if it's a boilerplate standard refusal letter, that's not the actual refusal uh, reasons. There are always refusal reasons. In some rare cases, there might not actually be. Uh, I've seen some files where we requested the reasons, we went to court or we did an ATIP request to get a copy of the file and there was actually uh, no reasons. And those cases we can actually very easily um, win in court because the law states that an officer has to provide uh, actual reasons for refusal. So if you do get a standard letter, you should send a web form or a letter or a FedEx uh, or all three actually, uh, just to be sh sure that you get a response to get the reasons for refusal. If you see that that's not working, uh, what we do typically is we ask a couple of times um, and if that doesn't work, then we do what's called the IRCC ATIP request online, which will provide us a copy of the full file and we specify that we want the officer's notes for refusal. Now, an ATIP is supposed to take uh, typically 30 days, uh, less than 30 days, but in some cases it could be many months. So sometimes you're in this weird situation where you need to know the reasons for refusal to see if you're going to go to court or reapply, uh, but you don't have them. So it could be a little bit tricky. I recommend speaking to a lawyer in this case to make sure that you have the best advice on, on how to proceed because often um, law experts will know how to navigate the system to be able, able to get the reasons for you. So Let's say you do have the reasons. Um, now, from the date that you receive the refusal letter, you have 15 days to file what's called an application for leave and for judicial review at the federal court. Now, when you file it, if you haven't received the reasons, uh, you have us lawyers indicate in the application um, that the reasons were not received and we will get them later on and that could have some impact on the deadlines to, to file uh, further documentation. Um, now, it's not every agency refusal that has to go to federal court or that should go to federal court. This is very important to know because we get a lot of clients who consult with us. Of course, it's very emotional. It's very stressful. They come and see us and they say, I have a refusal. I want to go to federal court. We say, okay, wait, hold on a second. Let's first look at uh, the aspects of your file. First of all, what did you file? What did you include? Was it complete? And what are the reasons for refusal? If, if you didn't submit adequate information, if there was errors and mistakes and inconsistencies, um, and the refusal letter addresses that, then we might not recommend to go to federal court. So this is really an exercise by the lawyer to look at what you filed, look at the case law, look at the reasons for refusal and make an assessment, a judgment call based on experience that we have going to court and then reading case law to see, okay, what are the chances of success here? Has there been uh, an inju has an injustice been done? Is is the is the decision unreasonable? Is there an error of fact or or of law? Uh, is there something that the officer should have considered? For example, best interest of, best interest of the children, efforts made to to settle in Canada. Have you been in Canada for two years or have you been in Canada for fifteen years? Have you been working and speaking French and English and making friends and having a network, or have you been here maybe a year or a few months? and you're 22 years old and, and maybe you came to study and you stayed longer, um, but now is it, does, do you really deserve to, to be approved under an agency? So we look at 
all of these factors uh, through a, a global lens and we try to make a judgment call and, and we provide you uh, with our recommendation to say, okay, you know what, in this situation, I think that you have a good case. There was a mistake that was done. You did a very good file, either you or the, the lawyer that represented you. Or if it's one of our clients, if we prepared a very strong application and we see that the reasons don't make sense, then we will ask, we will suggest to our clients to go to federal court. So. If we decide to go to federal court, we need to file an application for leave and judicial review in a very specific timeline. And after that, we have a certain amount of days that we need to file what's called the application record, which will include arguments, case law, and all of the documentation that you submitted. Following that, the Department of Justice, which, is, which are the lawyers that represent uh, Immigration Canada, will respond with their arguments. Following that, the entire file will go in front of a federal court judge who will decide whether leave is approved or not. Leave means permission to go to court. Um, if we do get leave approved, we will get a date for a hearing uh, well, where the lawyers will appear uh, in order to argue the case. So if I'm your lawyer, I will go to federal court and I will argue the case uh, against the Department of Justice who represents immigration. And at the end, the federal court judge will make a decision. Uh, in some cases, uh, well, in most cases, actually, the decision will come later on um, in a written decision. Um, if we look at your refusal reasons and we see that it's a good decision, the, the officer actually looked at all the evidence, gave you, uh, you know, if there were certain issues, gave you enough time to address these concerns, uh, considered uh, your story in totality and, and uh, the reason makes sense then we might decide not to go to federal court. And in that case, depending on, again, your situation right now, we might suggest to maybe reapply for humanitarian compassionate grounds with stronger and better documenta documentation. In some other cases, you know, sometimes I tell clients, well, actually, I don't think you should reapply. I, I think you will lose over and over again um, because of the situation. So we, we try our office. Uh, we don't try, but we, we're very honest in the way that we present the options to the clients. Um, we don't want to give false hope. So we'll explain the whole situation to you and you'll be the one who will make the final decision. Um, so it's important when you get a decision to try to consult with a lawyer as soon as possible because deadlines for an agency the, the decision, because they're in Canada, the deadline to file to federal court is 15 days. Um, in some exception, if you don't, for example, if your decision is dated um, September 1st, but you get the decision in your hand, September 29, the, this, the, the date uh, to file at federal court will run from the date that you receive it in your hands. But that could be a little bit tricky depending on how you received it and can you prove when you received it. So uh, essentially, as soon as you receive the decision, you should uh, know what your rights are to, to make sure that you, you do the right thing. Um, like I said earlier, it's important not to just go to federal court just to go to federal court just to gain more time. We have a lot of clients that come and see us, see us and they say, well, I don't want to get deported. I don't want CBSA to to to, uh, to send me away. I don't want the enforcement process to start. Can you just file, file federal court just so I can gain more time? We don't do that at our office. We don't recommend to do that. Um, we will look at the decision. We will look at what you filed and we will see if there's actually a good case to go to court. Going to court is, is a serious issue. Uh, federal court is one of the highest courts in Canada and, and we we don't take that lightly. So we will make a, a legal assessment of your case and explain to you if we go to federal court or we suggest that you reapply or you don't. In some cases, we might even tell you, and I've, I've done this many times where, for example, we had a family many years ago, they were from um, a very difficult situation in their home country and they had lived in Canada for so many years and they had children and we actually had to file four agency application and in those four I believe two or three of them we had to go to federal court um, but it kept being denied the agency kept being denied but ultimately the fourth agency uh, finally got approved so sometimes we actually decide to go to federal court and we reapply at the same time because we know that the case is extremely strong and we won't stop fighting until the end. Uh, but this is this is a very, very exceptional case. In our office, most of the HNC applications that we take, we do win them. Actually, although it's a very, very exceptional category because we really take on cases that we believe are, are very strong. And because we know um, what we have to do, we're gonna wait for this to pass. Because we know 
because we go to a federal court and we do litigation, we know exactly uh, how we need to prepare, prepare our applications. So uh, our applications are extremely strong, they're well prepared, they're very complete, uh, and because of this, uh, we often get approvals. And if we prepare these applications, and yes, sometimes we do get refusal, it happens, um, then typically we will go to federal court and try to, to win those cases. So final thoughts, when you do get from the beginning, the most important thing is actually to well prepare your agency application. Uh, if you do get a refusal, uh, make sure you ask for the reasons for refusal. Make sure you speak to a lawyer as soon as possible uh, and make sure you make the right decision uh, whether you want to reapply or go to federal court, court or maybe you don't reapply and you lo look at other options that may be available for you if at that point you have other options available for you in Canada. If you have any questions, if you've received an agency refusal or if you're filing an agency refusal, uh, an agency application, we have uh, we have other videos on that. Feel free to uh, look at our videos. We have a lot of blog posts on our website about these topics as well. And if you wanted to consult with us, don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you.